Summary of the Life of Alada Equiano by Alada Equiano Alada Equiano starts his story by talking about the traditions of his home country, which is now Nigeria. Even though the customs are very different from those in England, he argues that they are similar to Jewish customs and even suggests that Jews and Africans come from the same place. This argument lets Equiano start to show that slaves and black people in general are just as human as Europeans. They only seem less important than Europeans because white people treat them badly. Even though Equiano says that slavery is normal among his own people, he compares it to the harsh racial order that white Europeans set up. Equiano says that when he was 11, slave traders took him and his sister away. After living with a few different masters in the middle of Africa, he was taken away from his sister and taken to the coast. There, he saw a slave ship for the first time. He was shocked by how small, dirty, and even cruel the conditions were for the African slaves. He was both amazed and scared by the strange way the ship moved, which seemed to be driven by magic to him. He was scared at first that the scary-looking white men in charge of the ship were going to eat him, but the other slaves finally convinced him that they were being taken across the sea to work for white people. After a long, painful journey during which some of the slaves were so unhappy that they killed themselves, they arrived in Barbados. There, Equiano saw families being split up without any thought for the pain and grief this caused. He was then taken to Virginia and put on a farm where he was left alone. He didn't speak much English and didn't have many friends. After a few months, Michael Henry Pascal, a trader and Navy officer, came to see Equiano's master and liked the way Equiano looked. Equiano was bought by Pascal, who took him to the ship so he could be taken to England. Pascal was nicer to Equiano than any other white person had been. However, he didn't call Equiano by his chosen name, Jacob. Instead, he called him Gustavus Vassa. Equiano made friends with a young white boy named Richard, Dick, Baker on the ship, and the two became inseparable. In London, Equiano stayed with two sisters named the Miss Garens, who were related to Pascal. They were kind to Equiano and started teaching him how to read and write. They also taught him about the Bible and helped him get baptized. Equiano went on a few more trips with Pascal, where they fought in fights during the French and Indian Wars. After that, they went to Gibraltar and the Mediterranean. After a few more fights, they went back to England, where Equiano started to hope that he might be freed. But Pascal misled Equiano by not letting him leave the ship and making him work for Captain James Doran in yet another way. Pascal also stole everything Equiano had, except for the nine guineas he had saved up over time. Equiano went to the West Indies with Doran. The way the slaves there were treated reminded him a lot of how he was treated as a slave. Soon after, Doran sold Equiano to a Quaker trader named Mr. Robert King. King treated Equiano with more respect and recognized how good he was as a sailor. King gave Equiano to a captain named Thomas Farmer and finally let him go on a number of trips between the West Indies, St. Eustatia, and Georgia. On these trips, slaves and other things were moved and traded. Farmer let Equiano start his own business. Starting with just three pence, Equiano saved up and bought things to sell on his own. Equiano had to deal with unfair treatment from white men who wouldn't pay him or tried to cheat him on all of their journeys. Equiano understood that because he was black, he could not get justice through the law. Equiano finally saved up the 40 pounds that King had said would be the price of his freedom, and he bought his own freedom. Still, King and Farmer tried to convince him to work for them, and he agreed. Equiano still saw free people being pushed back into slavery, which is something that almost happened to him. This made him realize how fragile his freedom was. On the way back from a trip to Georgia, Farmer got sick and died. Equiano took over as the leader of the group. He kept traveling and taking part in the slave trade under a new master, William Phillips, even though Equiano wanted to go back to England more and more. After being misled by several leaders, he finally made it back to the West Indies, where he got a good behavior certificate from Mr. King and went back to England. In England, Equiano got back in touch with the Miss Garens, who helped him get a job as a barber. 
He also went to see Pascal, who didn't seem to care at all about what he had done. Equiano got bored after a while. He thought he could make more money at sea, so he went on a few trips. During this time, he also started to have trouble with his faith. He went from church to church, and his questions about future life and the sinfulness he saw in people who seemed to be Christians made him unhappy. Equiano met a group of people in Turkey who helped him understand Bible texts better. Many of the Christians he knew in England seemed less holy than these ones. On one trip back to England, Equiano had a spiritual awakening that included seeing Jesus on the cross. This was a spiritual rebirth that strengthened Equiano's faith but also set him apart from other sailors, who were more likely to laugh at his change of heart. Dr. Irving had hired Equiano, and when he decided to start a farm in Jamaica, he asked Equiano to come with him. During the trip, he tried to teach a mosquito Indian prince about Christianity, but the effects were not clear. Equiano helped Irving set up a farm, and he himself was kind and generous with the slaves. He eventually wanted to go back to England, but white leaders betrayed him and treated him badly again and again. He finally made it back to England, where he started to settle down, but he never stayed there for long. He went on a fruitless, but in theory inspiring, trip to Africa to bring some former slaves back to their home country. In the end, he makes a strong case against the slave trade by appealing to the Christian beliefs of the British and by giving economic and business reasons why slavery should end in Africa should be open to British goods and services. About the author. Equiano was born in a village in Africa. When he was 11, he was taken and sold into slavery. After being taken to the coast of Africa and then to Barbados and Virginia, he was bought by Michael Henry Pascal, a former Navy officer and trader, who took him to England. From there, he was traded between different masters and fought in the French and Indian Wars, which he describes in detail in his book, until he finally bought his freedom. Later, he moved to England and became a member of the Sons of Africa, a group of well-known African men in London who worked to end slavery. He spent a lot of time working on this cause. When he was 44, his memoirs came out. It was an international bestseller that was reprinted nine times and had a big impact on the American drive to end slavery. Equiano later married Susanna Cullen, a white woman. He died when he was 52. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.